Okay, I'm recording now. <laughs> okay. Hello, we're having a discussion on all things Chaos and Overy, like Spirit yeah, Personality, I'm Seeker. Sort of tangential, we did some co op editing earlier and now we're just sort of chilling. Shooting and, the and, breeze. And maybe maybe warming up for the next editing session. But until then, we're just discussing things. So, writing style, you, mm -hmm. endings. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I think I have stumbled upon what could be considered my writing style. At least one that I feel comfortable working within. Because you know, I don't like planning things out too too much. Mm -hmm. There's there's a point where I'm like, oh, this this ball. I I I plan stuff out so much, and then it's like, oh, now I've got to write it. You <laughs> know, and and that's that's so. What I've worked out is, and this is true of Seeker and Split Personality too, I write to a certain point. Like, I get very close to the end, maybe one or two chapters away from the end. And then I sort of know what beats I want to hit in those chapters. Like, the rest of the story has sort of told me what I want to hit in those chapters, or, or ideas for future stories have told me where I want to sort of meander within these final chapters. But I don't write them. Mm -hmm. And... Then at the end, when it comes to sort of like the the readings and stuff, when when me and you get together, mm -hmm. you, when it came to Seeker, you created that chapter, uh, the final chapter, and it just it rings all the right bells. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, I think I think I work better in that in that sense. Mm -hmm. I write I write the main bulk of it in first draft, mm -hmm. and then the last couple of chapters, it's like we'll do this together. Yeah, and besides that, that that is a sensible thinking because you will know that it's gonna get changed anyway. So uh, if you get too invested in the ending, or like, you will be able to describe or or express what you want to achieve with the ending. So that part you you do have, and at the same time, if you spend too much time polishing an ending that will get changed anyway, then that's going to lead to a, a different kind of frustration. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like uh, the end chapter for Seeker kind of grew out from the restructuring of earlier chapters. So basically based on what you had in the first draft, the final chapter that we have now would have never emerged. It only it only no. came up because of the because of some adjustments and and uh, refinements and such. Mm -hmm. And it works really well. I think it, I think we've hit on a good on a good style here. We'll see. We'll see when uh, <laughs> Split Personality Two rolls around. But, uh, and that's why I think. Um, starting posts on the forum and the forum in general and also just short stories in general mm. they're in a sense sometimes they're better for me because I don't often know where a forum post is going to lead when mm -hmm. I start it I know what characters I want to use mm -hmm. and I sort of got a general idea of what's going on but it's it's more a case of okay so there's there's this sort of start to a story on the forum mm -hmm. And I can't, I think it's Journey to the Center of Alicia, which I knew I wanted to have a story where Luna, Rogue, Nux, and Kimberland all interacted with one another. Mm -hmm. And then, in the grand scheme of things, I can only really see that happening in a couple of locations. Mm. The, the most obvious, I suppose, of those would be the Alicia timeline, because that's when, uh, that's around the time everybody starts coming together. Like the you get the Corys and the Lunars and Rogues mm -hmm. and and then if and every Black Star, all of that comes together and they they get a focus. And also, I should probably point out that this is all also subject to change because of the way the creative thing works. Like mm -hmm. I've got a loose idea of the overall arc that I'd like to follow, but if the stories take a different, better twist, then I'm going to follow that instead. You know, if they tell a more interesting story. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with that instead. But yeah, so I thought to myself, where is the most logical place for these for these four characters to meet up? And it turned out Alicia. And then I was like, well, what can they be doing on Alicia? 
I was like, well, it's a whole planet. There's a whole planet out there for them to explore. Mm. They could go and do something relating to that. Um, and I also think that was sparked in part by a story idea that Kyoto had posted. Mm-hmm. I can't quite remember what one it was, but he posted a story, and then that I think that that idea sparked the oh now there's a setting for the Nux mm-hmm. Luna Rogue Kimberlin story. Do you know what I mean? So that was cool. I think any story with Nux and Luna in it is is always going to make me happy. <laughs> My first. The f- it's just going to sound weird, yeah, but on the forum somewhere, I can't find the story it's in. But Luna and Nux, there's a sex scene, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and afterwards, Rue and Cluster are both messaging me, like, wow, that was amazing. Like, <laughs> and, I, and I've done really well, and I was really proud of it, but I can't find it now. But any story with Luna and, and Nux in it, I absolutely love. I love the chemistry between the two characters. And the thing that annoys me the most is where we are currently in like the quote unquote book things mm-hmm. is that we don't get to explore that relationship because I haven't even met yet in terms of the books. <laughs> but the nice thing about quote unquote the leaked material is that we get to explore this now yep. without it impact you know, so I'm very happy. This okay. So a second to uh to explain what leaked material means. So basically, we've had a bit of a brain spike, uh, an idea that because producing clean material is painstaking and long, and at the same time, we have a buttload of, uh, of fun stuff going on in our forum, uh, the basic idea is that we will try to select and post some of the forum materials unedited into our website story samples and of course uh, we need a selection process and we need to ask uh, our other uh, other people in our creative gang because some of those stories take place in a setting that uh, other people have set up or, or sparked uh, we definitely need to get uh, Kiyori's blessing for it because <laughs> he, he has I think he has set up uh, most of the uh, most of the environments and uh, as a GM he has kicked some of the storylines into gear uh, but even even so there are still uh, materials which are well, they, they wouldn't work as a published story, but as a this is what we're doing at the forum, here's an example kind of uh, kind of thing, they would make a very very nice addition to our little portfolio thingy. Mm-hmm. And also would would work as a little flavor introduction sort of uh, material uh, to our our uh, universe while there wouldn't be any worries about canon because the forum material is, is basically the rough creative uh, goop so what's what's in the forum is not the same as what's going into into the clean and uh, uh, clean and trimmed uh, stories later on so for a long time there was this uh, we we were trying to work some forum stuff into uh, into cleanish material and for a long time there was this uh, state where we tried to force the forum workings into a sort of canon that would work together with the uh, print ready material and and by doing so we actually made things very difficult for ourselves <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, now there is a new idea and uh, we hope to Executed soon, ish. There's uh, there's the other element with this, of course, that some of your stories, some of the stuff you've written. I mean, Space Junk sort of like that. That's nice and self-contained. Yeah, so Space that, Junk that is that self-contained was... and and edited as a stor- short story. But what comes after it is already yeah. dependent on Kyori's settings. Yeah, and there's a very there's a very well, I mean, there are some great moments with Smith 
in 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 the in the stories that follow, like the whole thing with Risto and the moment with mm-hmm. Corey in the canteen and things like that, they're great moments. Mm-hmm. But they also sort of risk if we don't share them now. There's a risk that they might never see the light of day yep. if we don't make that journey to that exact point. You know, so yeah, yeah, because uh, that's the thing that the uh, point one working stories out for print takes time and effort and also the material itself transforms in the process which means that all the uh, primordial story goop and and sort of raw ooze might (laughs) never make it into the final material but we got some cool shit there (laughs) yeah definitely (laughs) we want to show this stuff man yeah yeah (laughs) like we uh, we we don't we don't wanna we don't wanna sort of share it without uh, any consideration or like we don't we don't want to show it unfiltered but we can curate and take some bits which are uh, good enough for showing to at least uh, at least uh, friends and friends of friends mm-hmm. and yeah, I had another thing to really say which I forgot <laughs> sorry <laughs> There are some really great moments, though. Yeah. And ah, uh, regarding regarding some of the uh, some of the story threads, I think um, some uh, forum posts, when shared, uh, should probably come in a string, like uh, uh, like for example uh, the uh, the uh, Risto and Smith moment actually doesn't make sense if there is no build up <laughs> so some of, some of those some of those uh, pieces have to be stringed together with other pieces to to make sense mm-hmm. like even without worrying worrying about canon there's still some need for context and uh, and 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 we probably need to write up uh, some some connective uh, explanations like previously in <laughs> this and this section uh, this and this character had done such and such and now they are meeting up with those and those characters so that that sort of thing is, is probably necessary but yeah <laughs> this 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 would uh, this would lead to one of the uh, posts that I would also be very uh, very enth- enthusiastic to share st- Smith and Chaos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and as a as a little supplement. That's almost a given. That's like the yeah. starting point for <laughs> selecting chunks from this. Like this is awesome, definitely. You know. <laughs> and recently, I don't know if anything comes out of it, but recently we braved up and submitted a a little. Uh, snippet of seeker into writership uh, podcast and uh, we had never thought about using a pen name before and i think uh, we I, w- I would like i would very much like to keep using real names in the book covers but there was a there was a form submission form and in it was the question what's your pen name <laughs> and and Lux was like well if we did use a pen name, what would it be? <laughs> I was like, Smith and Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop out. <laughs> it's like it's like Hasbro and Koch, but cooler. <laughs> oh. Everybody Very watching good. at home has no idea what we're talking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> Obscure world building uh, <laughs> references all over. It's going to be like when we end up on stage giving talks about this sort of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, author talks, it's just going to descend into these in jokes every time. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be able to help ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, hit it with a stick! Like, we'll be talking about yep. the RPG. Hit it with a stick! And yep. me and you will burst out laughing. Nobody else will get it. <laughs> what was the other thing? T-shirt, SMG. <laughs> you know, what I discovered later on uh, is why I need a proofreader. I thought I, I wrote T-shirt, but I had skipped R. <laughs> Typo. T-shirt, T-shirt. 
Oh, Six. nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair so enough. Maybe, maybe maybe I shouldn't be allowed to Twitter <laughs> <laughs> because I will bring an embarrassment for a, what you're actually, for a company. You your tweeting has made me more tweetery. Hmm. I don't I don't know. I'm not hip and down with the kids. But because <laughs> you're you're tweeting I am, yeah, with that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I find myself on Twitter a little bit more than I used to be and mm. actually engaging with it a bit more. Mm. It's not just like I'm here to scroll through loads of shit and not contribute. Mm. It's like, oh, hang on, this is cool. So. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if, uh, if it was a personal account, then I would just sort of sit and read and, uh, and do nothing, or I, I wouldn't have an account. But mm. since since it's a quote unquote corporate account or, or you know the basically meant as a group account mm -hmm. and I am I am merely representing a thing, uh then it's it's almost like I, I, I run it as a as a persona. So it's well or or like it's it's like when some web comics have uh, have Twitter accounts for certain characters. So everything they everything that account posts is from that character's perspective. So this is a little bit like this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not a personal account. It's a sort of in character account. And as a result, uh, on one hand, it means I I already have pre-made some choices what to what to engage in. For example, I. I retweet some shiny space pictures because that sort of uh, helps to helps to show that oh, we're into this sort of thing, <laughs> and uh, and and also there is a there is an aspect of playfulness to it. Mm -hmm. And on on one hand, there are in jokes and there are some some running gags, at least for me, but on the other hand. Uh, I know that those running gags won't get too personal, or, or like I, I won't just breach anybody's bubble by saying everything is better with tardigrades, <laughs> because that's that's sort of that's that's like a group in joke thing which mm -hmm. I have already set set up earlier, if that makes any sense. That hashtag's gonna take off, man. Just you watch. It'll be trending one day, and you will be the you will be the one who started everything. <laughs> and if anybody asks, then uh, this is a uh, an obscure reference to uh, Darkness Rising, where they said everything's better with pirates. <laughs> 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 and also because uh, uh, tardigrades are like my go-to sci-fi inspiration for everything. It's like mm -hmm. when I imagine future biotech and future uh, construction concepts, they have so much to learn from tardigrades. <laughs> <laughs> I think at one point when I was discussing the idea of the Alexis being potentially a wood woodlouse, Mm -hmm. shaped vessel you suggested that perhaps instead it should be a tardigrade shaped vessel <laughs> uh, I, the... I'm, I'm not sure i was even thinking about the the shape but i was i was thinking more like having a tardigrade class oh yeah that was it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the tardigrade and, class and I, thought, I, I think i also had a shuttle class called the tamago which <laughs> means egg <laughs> That's, and and other 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 sort of like mix and match different languages, different uh, uh, biological thingies sort of idea. What's happening? I don't know. Oh, okay. My dad is drilling something. <laughs> you drill away, my good man. <laughs> That's the that's another element of the uh, Chaos Nova universe. Um, the when I uploaded my one, the one of the chapters from Split Personality Two, I think it's come across the chapter where I talk about the ships that 
you're used and it's like interdictors frigates and something else and i deliberately make the note that this is not classifications that you would use at mm. all ever mm. in a million years mm. right and e and the next line after i've described them as interdictors fallon then immediately goes on to describe them as scramblers not mm. interdictors so mm. they've already got like a colloquial name mm -hmm. already knocking about for them but I was like, this is probably more of a thing that would happen around Rystock. So, you know, tardigrade class elsewhere in the universe, mm -hmm. and then you've got shuttle class mm -hmm. elsewhere, and, you know. So that's another big thing we want to... I think I don't think... Hmm. It's not moving away from the naval terms. It's knowing where they're appropriate. Yeah. Because... It's, it, uh, it's like... Um... I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna use the word that goes with it, but it's it's basically recognizing that what you have is not the universal default, but it is one. It, you are representing a specific sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like I am. I am representing my specific local flavor, my specific naming scheme. Mm -hmm. So like uh, when I when I call like food names, food names are very localized, and and uh, if you say oh don't you have rolls? Everybody has rolls, and and you think mm -hmm. like when uh, so when 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 you go to when you come to Estonia and you go to the groceries and and you ask me if you have rolls, mm -hmm. and I say I don't know what you're talking about, and you immediately. Uh, think that, huh? But everybody has roles. How can how <laughs> can't they have roles? <laughs> then the uh, recognition to come from it should be that actually you are representing your specific culture where a certain kind of food is called role, and over here we have it, which is which is considered something else. Yeah. So basically, same same thing, same thing with all sorts of naming naming schemes and uh, and classifications. Is that sure? Use it in the book. Just don't treat it as the sort of word of God universal top down mm -hmm. <laughs> thing. Just let one specific location or one specific character have it and yeah. and, and make it their thing. And this is why in my notes I very specifically said this is more likely to be something used around mm -hmm. the Rystar section because classically when I've written about Rystar that's that's what they use. And I feel it helps to know what those potential classifications are so you can then... Mm -hmm. So the, the bump thread on the forum has got the details from the card game mm -hmm. at the very bottom of it and that explains from like class 1 to class 20 mm -hmm. uh, what the different sort of in my mind the headcanon of the sizes of ships as they go up mm -hmm. so you've got like I don't know escape pods all the way up to super leviathans and things mm -hmm. like that but having that list there lets me know that oh okay so in this in this terminology it would be called a destroyer so in my mind Alexis would be a destroyer but in but then we can extrapolate from that we don't have to we don't call it... Oh, hang on, I'm wording this very badly. Um, hmm. I need to know what what the original classification is so we can change them, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. we ne yeah, I need yeah, to yeah. see... Yeah, you, I... you, need to, you need to know what you're talking about so that you could apply the localised terminology to it. Yeah, yes. Very eloquent. I think I need to lay down. <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, that's what I was trying to get across. But but the bump thread is a massive help. And this is the point, yeah. I can also just throw those words into the story mm -hmm. and be like, also no, this isn't right. But yeah. this is the terminology I'm using yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. This is a placeholder to move along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we have reached a point uh, of conclusions because I think we have we have just just enough discussion for a nice uh, episode. So let's wrap this one up. Thank you very much for watching. 
these, you have these have been our <laughs> our thoughts <laughs> on sharing our stuff and 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 sharing sharing our presence and uh, and uh, dabbling a little bit in the naming schemes. But yeah, basically, it's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! I will I will stop recording now. Bye. Bye.